Salutations everyone, I'm SuperDad78X and today we're playing some Crystal Land. Why am I doing this voice? I don't know. Uh, anyways, we we're back in the Crystal Land where last episode we had the cutest shit ever happen and we got fucking... We got, we got bamboozled at the end and I'm not accepting this level of bamboozlery. So hopefully some more cute shit happens. So yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna we're gonna hop right in this. The next m morning, we wake up early like usual. After getting ready and pocketing and packing my things, I meet the rest of the team downstairs. Amelia's parents wait for us by the door. As we finish gathering things, her mother tr li uh, mother's lip trembles. She watches us pack. That sucks. Are you sure you need to leave so soon? Aww. Lena smiles softly. I wish we could stay longer, but we must be going. Yeah, get to go somewhere the Tapley Anna. You understand, right? Of course. You're all welcome here at any time. Is he the guy who voiced as Ar I don't think I didn't point out, but is Arthur the guy who vo uh, voiced uh what was what was there? Uh, Uncle Kaito? Same guy? He's really good at doing like dad figures. Keep keep doing what you're doing, guy. I appreciate you. Amelia's mom hands us parcels. I, I like you some parcels. food for your journey. Give me more parcels. I love parcels. Fucking parsnips. I packed all the uh, food oh, for journey. Couldn't possibly eat it. She tuts and forces the parcels in her hands. Man, they are just some nice people. Like this is this is wonderful. I won't take no for an answer. Mila packs hers without protest, and the rest of us follow suit. We turn to her family one last time before leaving. I'd give my left nut to voice a character in one of their games. Pixel Fade, if in the very rare chance that you watch and you made it to fucking episode 10, uh... Can I, can I, can I do some, can I do some voice work for your characters? I'll gladly voice even a fucking side character. I don't, I don't know. It'd be an honor. I know I kind of roast you guys, but I enjoy your games. That's why I keep buying them. <laughs> Thank you again. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having us. I mean, I can't voice a woman, but if you want me to, I can totally do it. <laughs> I always imagine myself as a sexy young woman. <laughs> Thanks. It was nice to meet you. Thanks. Oh yeah, you smiled creepily too in the last episode. How you doing, Zach? Farewell, hmm. mother. Her mother squeezes each of us in a big hug. When she hugs Lena, she pauses. Take care of our daughter. I will. After one final goodbye, we leave. Uh, we leave their house and make our way back towards the town. I'm gonna say one thing: Amelia probably could protect Leanna since she is a mage caster, meaning she knows multiple elements. While well, this young female here knows the physics of wind. We pass the inn and other shops. But we don't make any stops. Eventually, we pass through the town's gates. Town gates. English is not my string feud, apparently. Uh, we continue down the familiar dearth paths surrounded by greenery. Most of our journeys on eventful become more accustomed to the walking and silences, but I still wish the journeys to our destinations weren't so long. So we, uh, uh, I still wish the journeys to our destinations weren't so long. It can get pretty boring. Is this the first pathway we saw when, uh... Uh, I like the scene. I think it's the one where when we first start playing the game and we head towards the um, first town. I think this is that same one. I think. Or, I don't know. I could be wrong. This is, uh, I think, that uh, something darts in front of me. Uh, we can try to catch it. Uh, that's a possibility. Override file. I think Ace had unlimited save files. I wish this game kind of copied that because I save every decision. <laughs> Catch it. Whoa! I lunge for whatever it is and my hands brush against it as fur to reach for its tail. It evades my grass and hops into a bush. The pongo waddles over to the bush and watches it curiously. Boy, boy. I'd even voice a pongo in another game or something like that. <laughs> Help me out here, Pixel Fade. Brush still rain still. The pongo cocks his head to the side. Boy. Then he sticks his head into the bush and immediately retreats as a claw swipes at him. He rushes back at me and hides behind my leg. He huffs. I mean, you did just go and bother it. 
The Pongo pout's looking betrayed. Poi, poi. Sorry, Pongo. I wish we'd have named him. You know I've always got your back. Does he even have a back? Dun, dun, dun. So what is that thing? It's a Sabali. Leah seems more excited than usual to see an animal. What's that? Basically an overgrown rodent. Untrue. Sabali are not part of the rodent family. <laughs> I love that all she Amelia's only purpose is to shut down Zack. <laughs> Cuter than rodents. I didn't get a very good look at the thing when it raced by. But what is it? Because what I saw it kinda looked like a baby bear with a long claws and a very long That's tail. A pretty accurate description, actually. They're very rare. Since you saw one, you're going to have good luck. Does that mean we're gonna smash later tonight? Mm -hmm. Hint 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 nudge 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 nudge. I can uh I can uh, blow my magic on. <laughs> Zack looks unimpressed. I don't see how lucky it can be if it almost tripped them up. Well, they tend to hide from people. If one lets you spot it, then that must mean you're special. Such superstitions originated back when primitive societies were learning to recognize dangerous species from harmless ones. You must be real fun at parties. Because the Sabali feed on insects and small rodents, many would deem to be pests. They are recognized as a harmless and even helpful animal. As such, many humans wish to domesticate them as pets. But the Sabali are timid creatures and shy away from most other animals, especially ones which are considered threatening. Thus, the Sabali were regarded as lucky due to the difficult nature of witnessing one. In reality, there is no luck involved. I see. My character's like, what the fuck, man? Car pouts playfully at Amelia. Aw, come on, Amy. Let them keep their superstitions. Amelia's eyes widen. A Amy? Oh! She actually didn't sound like a robot for once! Sure, that's your name, right? That's what your parents called you. It is, but... She broke a facade! Yay! Amelia pauses and, some, uh, Amelia pauses and seems to regain her composure. My name is Amelia. Does calling you Amy bother you? Amelia seems uncertain. I did not mean to imply that it is a bother. It is merely a surprise. Aw, well, don't worry, Amy. It's a cute name. <laughs> She's like, this bitch! <laughs> Amelia fidgets as Lena calls her Amy. She tries to speak, but for once she seems flustered. Well, it seems that. Let's leave Amy alone and move on. We also we stare at Zach. Oh, he gets the clap back. What? You called her Amy. It's shorter than three syllables. Why wouldn't I call her that if she's okay with it? That's this. That seems like a very Zach answer. Zach would probably preference that with long words are scary or difficult or blame the entire English language. But that's pretty accurate on something Zach would say. Amelia sighs. Uh, if that is what you prefer, then I suppose you may call me as such. Good, because Amelia sucks. Hey, I love these like little drawings here. These are nice. I'm just going to take a screenshot of that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I did it anyway. Kara grins and pats Amelia in the head. I knew you'd come around. See, they're just best friends. Amelia at first blinks in confusion. As Kara continues to pat her, she doesn't really seem to know what to do with herself. Eventually, she just lets it happen. <laughs> Although Amelia tries to act cool, she, the touch of pink in her cheeks gives away the true thought. I think she likes the nickname. Amy is a cute. Oh, this seems like. I don't wanna. Fuck, man. I don't want to, like, go down the wrong path, but it's, like, it's better than... Fuck it, we're just... Uh... I like the name, Amy. I think it suits that is you. That fortunate, as I believe that is how the group will refer to me from now on. <laughs> anyway, let's get going. We're using our journey. For the next three days, we travel uh, on foot during the day and make uh, camp at night. Lena continues ca uh, my casting trainings, but I've made no progress. I begin to feel discouraged, and although she tries hard to hide it, I can sense the frustration, uh, frustration Leanna feels. 
Why am I having such difficult casting? There must be something I'm missing. Since Leanne won't give up on my trainings, I resolve uh, to push past my disappointment and continue to focus on myself. The fourth day, we travel the entire day and set up camp in the evening. Hey, I actually do like this. I like this looks nice. Could you get this rock here? So I'm assuming, like, uh, my idea is like the rock curves around, so we're kind of like covered. So basically, like, this is like a cove almost. I shouldn't say cove, but nice little outcrop. I don't know. It looks nice. I would camp here. Is what I'm trying to preference. And look at all this wood. We're done. All the uh, done uh, once. Uh, as we've done in all of our past trainings, Zach, Carr, and Amelia take care of the setup while Lena and I try to open an area to train. I still drive whenever it's time to train as I haven't shown any progress. It's starting to feel like a useless chore at this point. Ready? Or I reluctantly nod. All Let's right. see if we can actually do Just it. Just like we've practiced, focus on channeling through the manipulator. So I've done so many times before, I try to do exactly what Lena says, but just like my previous attempts, it doesn't You've work. Got this. You just have to focus. I'm focusing. I share a lot of my mind simultaneously trying to figure out what exactly I'm supposed to be focusing on and wondering if this is all actually bogus anyway. Lena watches me intently, waiting for the spark of mag magic which doesn't appear. I let go and breathe out in frustration. Try again. We consider the possibility that only humans from Terra can cast. Lena's voice is firm. Just try again. The heavy side, I bring my hand up and try again. As expected, nothing happens. This is completely pointless. I lower my hand. Maybe I'm just not meant to cast. Suddenly, a strong gust of wind pushes me on my feet and knocks me to the ground. Oof. Lena glares at me, a fierce look in her face. Get up. I cough as I catch my breath and push myself to the feet. What the hell? Lena raises her arm again. Oh. Freeze, dodge, deflect. Uh, what does she mean by deflect? I can't use my star for gust or win. I end up taking another hit and uh, sway on my face. I balk at the uh, sternness in her tone and uh, tired demeanor has changed from a calm and patient teacher to a dangerous mage knight. What's gotten into you? She ignores me and aims another shot of magic. It's time to jump out of the way, but she's relentless. I line up and uh, just line her up. I don't know what you mean by deflect. Lena stands another gust at me after a narrowly dodge before my bearings. Another shot of magic comes at me. And then another. Would you just... And another. Hold on. And another. My breathing is short and anger warms my blood. She's shooting off wind blasts so quickly I don't have time to think or move. Her attacks really nice to keep knocking me down. That gust of wind soars towards me. Lena, stop. I take that blast. Uh, I take that blast, although it's powerful. The other, uh, it's just as powerful as this time I maintain my footing. That's not deflecting. She frowns in concentration and she ramps up another attack, then she lets loose another gust of wind. I try to block with my arms, this blast is stronger than the last, and it hurls me into the air. I crash painfully on the ground, but force with the force down to the pain and get back on my feet. My breathing is ragged and my body's sore. He is already channeling another attack. I don't know what's gotten into her, I can't take keep taking these hits. She launches another attack, and anger bubbles inside me and boils over. I throw my hand and feel the anger shoot down my arm and out of my glowing manipulator and the gust of wind which knocks the blast away. Lena gasps and drops her attacks. You did it! I stare at my arm, too bewildered to even comp comprehend what is happening. Suddenly, Lena is laughing loudly, and as things come down, I notice the rest of the group is already here. They must have heard the commotion. He cast it. Lena grins he broadly. He finally cast. That's amazing. All it took is just some <laughs> some relationship abuse. <laughs> That wooden magic, it came from me. The realism slowly draw, uh, dawns on me. I cast that. My eyes grow wide and I split to a huge grin. Yes, I can't believe it did it. It was great for me to even Zach cracks a smile and nods. Is it a general smile or the smile that would uh, scare the penises off children? Amelia watched us curiously. I assume you used the technique which we had previously discussed. Wait, what? Leanna looks sheepish and refuses to make eye contact. What te technique? The high for my casting begins to wear off as I remember the mix of anger and confusion I felt from the text. You mean you guys thought it would be a good idea to randomly just start attacking me? Lena shakes her head looking at a mixture of worry and guilt. The Amelia calmly responds. Oh, huh, yeah, you're real fucking good at this. I didn't expect to be so bluntly agree. What do you expect from Amelia? You were making no progress on your training, and I believed a new strategy was necessary. Fuck you. One such method is to utilize the ingrained need for survival. When placed in high stress, dangerous situations, the human body will use all its resources to ensure survival. 
by putting you in such a situation, your response This is why you will never get my penis, Amelia. And channel energy. I can hear what Amelia said. Everything happened so fast, but once I realized there was no way to talk my way to Lena's attacks, I knew there was only one way out. I'm really sorry. Amelia felt this was the best way for you to learn since you didn't seem to be getting it my way. She I shows up. I'm thinking it's okay. I get it, and it was, or please be gentle next time. It's effective. Well, uh, it's not ideal. I can understand why she did the way, uh, did what she did, and I won't blame her for it. After all, it did work. It's okay. I understand. You were just trying to help me. Leanna yeah, no, nods. Thanks for understanding. I'm really glad it worked. I would have felt even worse if it didn't. So what now? Should I try again? Are you feeling up to it? If you need to take a break, we can do that. I think I should be okay. So words leave my mouth, my arm stings, and I feel a wet spot on my elbow. When I look down, I notice blood on my shirt. Yeah, I guess. I just my arm trying to see the damage. Oh, you don't say. On, I brought bandages. That's really no big deal. She races back to camp and grabs a roll of gauze from her pack, and then when she returns, she kneels beside me and reaches for my arm. I move, I move my arm out of her grasp. It's okay. I'm okay, really. This is just a scratch. Based on level bleeding, I can tell it's a bit more than a scratch, so can Leanna. She, like, shakes her head. Without taking no for an answer, she grabs my arm and takes a look. This time, she d I don't bother resisting. She only she dabs a blow with a damp cloth. I try not to wince from the sting. Sorry. I'll try to be gentle. Oh, I can promise you later on tonight, I won't be. <laughs> You're fine. Her hands are warm and delicate for a moment. I wonder how this arm feels, since it's wrapped in metal. Her arms are warm and delicate for a moment. I forget what she's doing, and I can feel her, her touch. Her gentle fingers uh, deaf wrap the gauze around my arm after she secures it she lets her hands fall back on her lap I feel a split second of disappointment as I let my arm fall back Here, beside me I don't know if the rest are still staying there so I want to say fucking something cringy. Yeah. thanks but you don't have to do all that for me for just uh you don't have to do all that for me just as good you got hurt, so it was only fitting for me to help treat you too. I know, and she smiles in response. I don't want to say the kiss thing because I feel like that's even cringy for me. I get to my feet, and we're ready to return to camp. After all, we had a chance to c eat and relax. We're ready for bed. For once, as soon as I lie down, my head exhaustion overtakes me, and I fall right to sleep. <laughs> Well, that was another episode of Ace Academy. Oh, wait, shit. I got the wrong game. Oh, no. That is uh, Crystalline. My B. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I, I'm keep trying to keep these episodes decently shorter instead of like the hour-long ones, but I try to go by a day-by-day -day basis just like I did in Ace at the end where it's just like wake up, record fifth day, and then put it back. But, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching.